Hi, welcome to the IG Live on Parents Self-Regulation. Today, we're going to help you manage your anxiety and the stress you're experiencing as you parent your kids. All right, so we'll wait for um, more people to join us. Those of you who are watching the replay, you can you know skip forward and go to the part where I begin. So right now, I'm just going to say hi to those parents who have just joined us. Hello, all right. Say hi in the chat box. Okay, so I'm just going to begin, all right? Uh, we're going to talk about managing your own emotions today, but I also want to manage your expectations, okay? We, you can't um, you know, watch a 30-minute IG live and immediately know how to regulate your emotion 100%. So this is the start of your journey, your journey to learn how to regulate your emotions, manage yourself so that you can be a role model to your children, all right? All right, so I wanted to start, start with this question. You know, how many of you, how many times in your parenting journey, right, have you yelled at your kids and decide that, oh, that was a good decision that I made? Unlikely, right? Most of us who yell at our children, we feel overwhelmed with guilt because we think that we should have managed ourselves better. So the reason you know why so many of us fly off the handle so easily is simply because we don't have that practice to learn how to manage our triggers and our emotions so i hope today can be the first day right first day you start your journey on managing yourself so i appreciate that you're taking time to learn and being here the fact that you are here listening means a lot that you are ready to start this journey so I'm going to um, go through this in uh, two parts. So the first part of today's session, we'll talk about how to manage your um, anger in the moment and outside the moment. The second part, I'll leave it to Q&A because I realize that uh, many of you have questions. So it's good that I can answer live, right? If, uh, answer your questions, okay? So um, what do you do in the moment? Now, when your kids start to act up or you know, display any behaviors, most likely, you know, if it triggers you, it will, your body will want to protect you, okay? So, for example, what is mom she shared? How do you manage children who are disrespectful? And I find it so difficult because that triggers me. I'm sure this trigger is not just for that mom. Even myself, I feel very triggered when the kids are unkind and they are disrespectful. So, the very first thing you want to do in the moment when you see things happening, you need to first be aware of it. You need to expect that it's going to happen. So my question to you is, do you even know what are your triggers? So can you type it inside the box before I you know, share with you what are the other triggers that parents have shared with me? You know, I want you to be very aware of it. The actual act of typing it out to me in this comment box shows that you know, all right? You know what makes you tick and uh, what are the buttons that your kids are pushing, okay? So I have a leaping say patience. When time is running out, the yells will come out. Yes. When we feel like we are out of time, we have to go for a meeting, for a Zoom meeting, the kids are taking their own sweet time. That could be your trigger. So you know that that's going to happen. Whenever you have a meeting, I'm going to jump forward a little. If you know that's your trigger, then you have to take action to give yourself enough time, all right? So, for, um, let's see. Starry said she doesn't know her trigger. Okay, don't worry. If you don't know your trigger, we will go through it. I'll go through what are the triggers of other parents and maybe some of it, you know, will make you feel very, very anxious about. But maybe you don't have a trigger. I'm not sure, yeah? All right. Uh, Ma said, my trigger is when my kid ignores me when I'm talking to him. Yes, so it's a form of like disrespectful behavior. When she whines, all right, I think my husband cannot stand, stand my daughter whining as well. One of my twin sometimes is hard to handle in the mornings, all right. Non-stop whining, too much mess in the morning, throwing things and screaming. When someone is trying to control me or controlling my kid without reason, now notice it's controlling the parent and controlling the kid. When he hits his younger brother, yes, aggressive behavior is something that I cannot tolerate as well. Being clingy when I'm super busy or whining when my child keeps quiet and doesn't want to say what she's unhappy about. Um, let me see. When my child is screaming, all right. When they shout, okay. 
siblings rivalry, uh, deliberately does the thing when we told him not to, shouting and crying non-stop. When he does things, uh, having a violent nature, bully the younger brother, telling lies, being too clingy. Okay, screaming, throwing something. Now, this is good. It's good because you are able to tell me. You are aware of it. You all have taken the very good first step. Okay, now my second step is whatever you have just typed, I want to ask you this question. Okay, you want to ask yourself this question as well. Whatever you just typed, is it an emergency? I'm going to share with you this photo on screen. All right. Okay, if you can see the screen, this is what I posted in my Instagram stories. My second step is to ask yourself, is it an emergency? Does this trigger compromise health and safety? If yes, please yell and keep your kids safe. You know, if they're hitting the little brother, if they're running around with a pair of scissors or refusing to hold your hands and dash across the road, you have every right to yell and lose control because you want to alert your kids. All right, so that's what if it's yes. But I would think that most of your Triggers here are not emergencies. Whining behavior is not an emergency. All right? Morning, stalling uh, morning um, routines is not an emergency. Being clingy is not an emergency. Telling lies, they're also not an emergency. So why do we yell? Okay, if you don't already know, we have an amazing body. What our body does is to protect us and it does its job so well. So even though he sees the child, you know, um, not sharing a toy with the sibling, it seems to your body that, you know, this is a threatening situation. Your child is not sharing. It's a perceived threat. But after today, you know that actually it's not an emergency. You don't need to... Sacrifice your relationship with your child over, you know, that um, not incident where they are not sharing, all right? Or, you know, some of you said that the kids are very rude and defiant. Now, this rude and be defiant behaviors cannot be tolerated. We're not going to accept that. But we can solve the problem in another way instead of yelling at our kids or punishing our children. The reason why we punish our children is because we want to stop the behavior. But by doing so, you neglect the underlying reasons why your kids are being disrespectful and rude. And how do you start to think about all these questions that I'm asking you? You need to tell your body, hey, relax, this is not an emergency. You don't need to get me to the fight mode. Like I said, our body is very good at protecting us. It will activate the threat response system and help us to see all these triggers as big emergencies and get us to yell and stop the behavior. But if it's no, if you have typed out no, it's not an emergency, I want you to think about this, all right? I want you to think about your re trigger and your typical reaction and notice that there's a space. So if you look at my hands, there's a gap here. I want you to visually see this gap. Now this gap is where you stop doing anything. You tolerate whatever emotion that comes to you without taking action. Now why do we need this gap here? Because we are trying to trick our brain. We want to teach our brain that whatever they see, there's not really an emergency. So we pause. At that moment, you do whatever it takes to calm yourself down. So parents in my course have shared with me, you know, they say counting to 10 helps them. Some of them say that, okay, I just need to breathe. <sighs> this is what I do as well. Okay, I do it in front of my children. Why do I do that? Because I want my kids to see that this is how you should cope with your big emotions. How you should manage your anger. If I yell at my kids, if I lose control, the kids learn that when I'm angry, I will do exactly what mommy and daddy did, which is to lose control and start yelling. I don't think we want our kids to act out that way. Some of you said that your trigger is that your kids are shouting. 
but why are your kids shouting? Because similarly, they have this knee-jerk reaction to whatever has happened to them. They did not insert this gap between the trigger and the reaction. So I want you to take this time to think about some of the coping techniques that you have ever tried and it's helpful. But if you have not tried, if you have tried everything and it's nothing works, can you tell me in the box below? Nothing works. Nothing can calm me down. Okay, sometimes you can take a, a breather or walk away. Tell your kids, I'm going to the bathroom for a while. And of course, you need to make sure that your kids are safe. All right. So for those of you who have just joined us, we talked about what your triggers are and to be very aware of it so that when things are going to happen, you can expect it. The second thing I ask you to think about is to ask yourself this question. Is this a true emergency? If it is an emergency, go ahead and yell and keep your kids safe. If it's not an emergency, fill in your gap with a coping skill. Pause and not react. I want you to trick your brain to respond to the situation, okay? All right, so far so good. Now, we are going to go on to the third part, all right? After you have, um, you know, tried these coping techniques and calmed yourself down, that's where you can respond to your children with calmness and figure out why are they acting out this way. So some of you said that, you know, you cannot take the mess in the house. So why is there a mess in the house? or your child is whining. Why is the child whining? Why is the child trying to communicate with you? I want you to think of all these triggers as um, a symptom of the behavior. So a symptom. So there's something causing this behavior, right? So what is the reason? So take time to understand that, okay? So of course, I won't be going deep into this. We're going to talk about this on Wednesday and on Friday. So don't forget to come for our next two more IG live sessions. Now, earlier on, I talked about what to do in the moment. Now, I want you to, to talk about why is it, what to do outside the moment. Okay, actually, the most effective way of learning how to calm yourself down is to have that practice not during the triggers, not, not when you're triggered. It's when you are calmer, you take your time to think about, you know, what do you truly want for your children? So ask yourself, why are you always so angry? You know, I'm sure some of you, you know, when you, come home every single day, you just feel so annoyed and you feel like, you know, um, this house is so chaotic and messy. Everyone is not listening. It happens to me as well. Okay. Even in my home, sometimes we are just all so stressed up. Why do, uh, do we feel angry? Now, do you know that anger is a secondary emotion? By definition, a secondary emotion means it's an emotion fueled by other emotions. So there is something beneath anger. What is causing you to be angry? What is that primary emotion that's causing you to be angry? Could it be you know you feeling shamed or you feeling um, powerless or you're upset, you're hurt, you are um, you know jealous. So why are you acting out that way? Why are you feeling angry? What is causing it? Take some time to think about that. Think of anger as a piece of information. So anger is information sent to you by your brain that something is wrong. You've got to take charge of a part of your body. So most of the time, okay, when we are angry, our needs are not met. So for example, you know, maybe you are deprived of sleep. You're taking care of a newborn and a toddler at the same time. Or maybe you're very stressed out at work. So you have so much to complete at work. When you reach home, you have to send an email, but you got to put your kids to sleep and they're stalling bedtime. So you feel angry about it. Why? Because of the stress that's in you. Or maybe sometimes you feel powerless. Meiju said it's a power struggle. Yes, your kids refuse to brush their teeth and you feel very inadequate. No, what, why is it that my kids are not listening to me? And the only way to get compliance, which works, is to yell at them or to punish them. It gives you immediate compliance. But like I said earlier on in the, in the session, how many of you feel good after yelling or punishing your kids? No, we don't. So you need to figure out what are your needs? What are your stresses in your life? If you can type it out right now, it will also help you and your partner to know what each other is going through. 
maybe it's this huge mental load of parenting that you got to wake up in the morning, take care of the children, go to work, send them to school, and you know, hustle, prepare food, pick them back, send them to classes. Everything is happening, um, you know, so quickly, and it's all on you. You are solo parenting, or you're a single parent, there's no support, you don't get you know, other people to be able to help you, maybe grandparents or, um, you know, maybe the childcare is going to be closed for three days and these, that is your peak period, you know, and you just feel so stressed out about that. Or maybe you just don't have any adult interaction. You have been with your kid. It's always mommy, 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 daddy, 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 and you don't get to spend time with other adults. So if you know your stresses, I want to encourage you, to take care of yourself, to get your own needs met because you cannot pour from an empty cup. You know, I think traditionally, parents will think that, oh, um, for those who, who are very invested in their kids' life, they will do everything for their children. They will drop everything and just go and help the kids. But I think nowadays, you know, it's, it's really getting more and more um, hard to manage because of all the additional stresses that we experience and it doesn't help with social media as well. When you're scrolling and you see other people managing parenting so well, putting on nice clothes, nice makeup, bringing the kids out, taking nice photos, but you know that those are just their highlight reels. You don't know what goes behind the scene. So if you're constantly comparing, that will also lead you to feel inadequate, jealous, and that is the primary emotion that leads to the anger. And then you lash out your kids. You feel that your life is in a mess. You're not a good parent. So what are your stresses? Okay, type it out to be aware of it and manage it. So I think some of you, okay, this mom who asked me, you know, she said in the question sticker in IG stories, I'm suppressing my emotions instead of managing it. I don't know how many of you are suppressing your emotion. Like you think that, okay, never mind, I'm just going to go to sleep and you'll get better the next day. So you don't want to deal with it. Or you say, I'll just watch Netflix, I'll just scroll through social media, I'm not going to think about this uh, anger or this uh, jealousy or this sadness that I feel. Maybe you quarrel with your partner and say, never mind, I'm just going to, not going to talk to him, I'm just going to go to sleep. Now, suppressing emotions don't lead to good outcomes. We know that, right? When you keep it inside you, you know, it can lead to physical stress. It can also lead to mental stress as well. So like anxiety, um, depression, and it all accumulates. So can you imagine that you don't manage it? You just keep putting it in, inside you. You think, I can do it. You know, um, I'm able to, uh, I'm a super mom and I can manage everything. I can take care of the children. I don't need help. It is all accumulating until you reach your breaking point you start to explode and you might even do things that you will regret. So if you are listening to this right now, all right, please don't be Superman or Superwoman. Go and get help. Like today, all right, today is um, here in Singapore is Deepa Valley. I told my husband to take care of the children because I could feel that is coming into me because there's so much for me to be done to prepare for the opening of my course on Thursday. And um, there are a lot of ad additional engagements that I have. So I tell him, I get help. And I'm very specific about it. So I want you to be specific when you get help from your partner, your um, parents or parents-in-law. You know, Can you take care of the children for me from this time to this time? So I was out and I could get my work done. And I actually felt better that I'm making progress. And I don't feel so stressed out. So hopefully, you know, you can get help. Don't be afraid to get help. When I remember when I was a first time parent, I want to do everything by myself. I want to take care of my child alone. I want to change his diapers. I want to shower him. I want to feed him. I want to do everything for him. I don't want anyone else to do it. I want to be the one. But what happens, you know, I get burnt out. You know, I feel like, why does the child need me all the time? And, uh, you know, suddenly, you know, I just feel so overwhelmed. I start crying for no reason. Because my body, when I cry, my body is telling me, I'm trying to help you to discharge this anger, this frustration in you so that you can feel better. So listen to your body. You know, if you can feel like if you pain or you feel frustrated, you feel uh, maybe some of your eczema that flares up when you are stressed up. Yeah, these are all signs. Okay. So we we're talking about how to manage emotions, right? Talk about um, talking to someone. So for example, like in my Sprout community, we have a Telegram group, we have a Facebook group. So there are different outlets where parents in the community can reach out and get help. 
right? So if they have a question, they just type it in and parents who are like-minded will then support them. And I think, you know, you can find your own community. You know, it could be your friends, it could be an online community. As long as you feel that you have a safe space to kind of vent out your frustration, all right? Then the other thing I want to talk about is therapy. So there is no harm getting help from the professionals. If you feel that it's you know, up to your neck and you cannot manage it anymore, this parenting thing is so tough for you, you have any negative thoughts about it, you know, very extreme thoughts, please, if you're hearing this, please Google for therapy. Um, if, if you want, if you know friends who know anyone, get help before it's too late, okay? I'm sure you've heard of stories of parents who are yeah, not, just not able to cope. Um, next, I, what, what did I write? Okay, I said that to make time for yourself. So I'm not sure whether you have scheduled time for yourself. Like put it in your calendar. You know how we add to our calendar, you know, and the kids have, um, you know, soccer class, ballet class, or like oh, dinner with, with your friends, oh, sorry, dinner with parents. Okay, what, what I'm trying to say is you don't schedule time to make for yourself. Like maybe you should just add in, go jogging or go for yoga, go for spin class or go shopping or, you know, uh, do nothing, listen to music. Yeah, and um, go outdoors, go, go for a walk. So schedule it in your calendar. So make time for yourself there, all right? And uh, finally, I think it helps if you can talk to someone about it. I, talk, I spoke about talking to a community, right? I spoke about talking to our friends. Now I want to talk about speaking to your partner. Okay, it would be good if you can set aside time every day to have couple time. When the parents are close, it shows the kids can see, you know, how loved they feel in the family. So make time to for your partner and talk about the struggles that you're experiencing. Talk about how you tend to lash out easily recently. Talk about how you can solve the problem. So I know some of you find it so hard, right, to get the partner to parent on the same page. But you don't have to force him or her to parent on the same page, but rather just share your concerns and what you're experiencing. Okay? All right. So I have, I'm just going to do a quick summary before I answer your questions. Okay, if any questions, type it in. So at the beginning, I talked about how to manage your anger in the moment and that you need to expect that it's going to come. So you need to be very aware what triggers you. What are the things that your kids do that push your button? When you are aware of that, okay, some of you have done the exercise with me, ask yourself, is this an emergency? If it's an emergency, yes, you have every right to yell or pull the kids apart just to make sure that they are safe. But if it's not an emergency, which is for most of your cases, then I want you to insert a gap between your trigger and your reaction. So that gap is a way to trick your brain into thinking that whatever they it perceive as emergency is not really an emergency. This is how you can then override that urge to try to go into the fight mode. And at the same time, think about what I've spoken in this IG Live. Think about why your kids are acting out. Why are they behaving in a certain way. What is the reason? What are the needs that are unmet? Then we talked about outside the moment, which means you need to take care of yourself before you can take care of your children. You know, like the airlines will also always say, you know, you put on your own oxygen mask before you help your kids put on theirs. Okay, so we talk, also talked about how anger is a secondary emotion, which means you've got to figure out what is that underlying feeling that leads to you feeling angry. Could it be sadness, hurt, jealousy, inadequacy, feeling powerless, feeling embarrassed, feeling shamed? So we've got to manage this. Of course, there are deeper things that we want to talk about. Like, you know, it maybe stems, all these stresses maybe stems from your childhood that nobody listened to you or you were often punished or you received physical punishment and that leads to you feeling so hard to manage yourself and you get angry easily and you're constantly on heightened alert. That could be a reason as well. So feel free to go and figure it out more about it. Um, in my course, I do share in module one about how you can manage your own emotions by thinking back about how were you brought up, how were you parented, okay? And um, I, talk, I mentioned about how you should not suppress your emotions as well. So this is where you need to seek help if you need to. There's no stigma to it. I think what is worse if you know that there's some kind of problem, your body is sending signals to you, 
this anger is a signal that your body is sending to you and you are ignoring it and it will just accumulate. So you can go for therapy, you can talk to people in a community, either your friends or online community, parenting support group. You can also speak to your husband. Then of course, to schedule time for yourself, take care of yourself, I hope that you know you get enough sleep. Like recently, I've been trying to sleep early, like 10 o'clock, I make sure I go to bed. So um, I think it helps, you know, when I get enough sleep, the next day, the kids don't get hit from me. I'm able to think better. I'm able to think about, okay, I'm able to pause and insert that gap because I can think, you know, I'm not like, I'm so exhausted or tired. Yeah, so, and also make time for yourself, like I say, to sleep more, sleep in, tell your husband, I want to sleep in today, um, listen to music, go outdoors, go for exercise, okay? I hope this has been a, a very quick summary and helpful for you. I'll just try to answer a few questions here. Okay, I'll just scroll up to the top a little. Mm, yeah, some of the stresses that some of you mentioned will be, as a stay-at-home mom, the immense mental load day in and out. I know, I know how that feels. I was a stay-at-home mom. Whether you're a stay-at-home mom, you're a working mom, you're a work-from-home mom, we all get this mental load in our minds. You know, some, some of us think that, oh, I'd rather go and work, or I'd rather stay at home. Um, regardless, it's tough. It, it, it's not as, as a pretty as what you see on Instagram, you know? People don't show the, the tough part that they experience every single day. Um, you know, that stress, that uh, frustration, they don't type it out. Maybe some do, but yeah, so I want to be very real that parenting is hard. Okay, if you find it hard, there's nothing wrong with you. You are doing wonderful. You are just doing your best. Even by being here and listening, you are already changing the way you are parenting because you want to be a better parent. All right? Um... Sometimes it's hormonal. I think Yen Jun said that uh, everything triggers me when I'm hormonal. Yeah, maybe it's the time of the month and you get easily triggered. That's possible. So if you know that it's the time of the month, then maybe that's time, the time where you've got to, you know, spend more time out uh, outdoors to take care of yourself. All right. Um, when a kid chooses one parent over another, like no papa or no mama for that moment of struggle, yeah, that could also be a, a stress because you want to help your partner, right? And the kid just doesn't want you. So we talk about parental preference. So my quick advice here is don't take it personally. So even the child says, I don't want papa, it doesn't mean that he hates you or he will never want you. It's just that at the moment when I have two options, I will definitely choose the option that I might very much prefer. All right, so uh, what we can do at that moment, like I shared in my, um, with my sport members, we, this month we actually talk about parenting um, with the other partner on the same page. So you don't want to, um, let's say the, the kid wants mama, right? So the papa should not just go away, just stay close by. And occasionally, you know, day by day, maybe mama can go off for a short while and come back. So there'll be interactions between the child and the non-preferred parent and that will help to slowly um, boost that relationship, okay? All right, let me answer the questions here. Um, how to deal with power struggles? Example, refusing to eat dinner, shower or going to the toilet. All right, I intend to answer this question on Friday, Sharon, like... Um, step by step, right? How, what do we work with this power struggle? But the reason why children enter a power struggle because they want to gain control. And it is human to want to be in charge. All of us are, have this hardwired need to want to feel empowered and be in control. So the problem is when you want to be in control, your kids want to be in control, that leads to a power struggle. And during moments like this, the only person who can really change the trajectory of that power struggle is you. So you want to step out of the power struggle. If your child is not eating dinner, not showering, or not going to the toilet, if this is your trigger, pause, insert a gap between your trigger and your reaction, and breathe first, okay? Not eating dinner, not showering, not going to the toilet is Sorry, I think I got paused. Okay, so not eating dinner, not showering, or not going to the toilet, they are not emergencies. So there's no need for you to yell. We can always solve the problem. So Sharon, come on Friday where I'll answer this question too, okay? Have tried empathizing and making the kid feel hurt, but doesn't work. Even tried playing games like competing and challenging, it doesn't work as well. Okay, so um, yeah, that, that we got to talk about building the connection with the child. Sometimes, you know, when kids act out, they also go through different stages, right? Like if they're at two years old, that is 
two to three years old, that is that prime age for them to say no. They want to do everything by themselves. So we got to figure out why they're acting out. You need to be aware of what your kids are going through at different stages. There are plenty of information out there. You can Google um, Ericsson psychomotor stages and that will tell you at different phases what the kids will experience. So for example, like four years old to six years old, they are all very curious and they want to keep exploring and keep experimenting. So you, you will find that your child is touching a lot more things, asking a lot of questions, all right? Uh, Zhi Tong say, ask if the video is recorded. Fingers crossed it's recorded. I'm going to upload on YouTube so that you guys can watch it and adjust the speed. All right. Uh, let me see. How to make them listen without being mad or yell? Because sometimes saying nicely never works. All right. So sometimes when you say things nicely, they don't respond um, according to what you expect. Right. Then what do you do? You start yelling, thinking that that will help them. But what happens when... You know, every time you talk to them, you have to end up yelling and yelling and yelling. Clearly, then the yelling part doesn't work, right? It doesn't get them to comply. So my question to you is, why are they not listening? Why are they not cooperating? Is something wrong? Is something that they're experiencing? Is it a developmental change? Are you, you know, making time to fill up their love buckets? Why should they listen to you? Especially when your kids get older, you will slowly lose the leverage. So many of you think that I'm going to yell, I'm going to punish my kid now because they will listen to me. Yeah, you can do that. It works. They will listen to you. But at what cost? You are missing out on the time to build relationship with your children. You are missing on the opportunity to connect with your kids. And when that relationship is not strong, as the kids grow older, they will start to feel distant from you, then no matter how you yell and punish next time, they're not going to care because our kids will grow and come to an age where this yelling and punishment will not matter to them anymore, okay? Is hitting parent an emergency moment or no? Yes, it is an emergency. If your child is hitting you, you want to hold the child, you can still be in control. You don't have to lose control. Hold the child and tell the child, we don't hit, all right? We don't hit and hold the child. Even the child is struggling, I've experienced this. Myself, it is so hard, but you have to really be firm, okay? The teaching has to come later. That moment is to get everybody to calm down. How do you tell a 10-month-old that something is wrong? He seems too young to understand or do we just let it pass? Yeah, a 10-month-old is very young to understand your words and what you are trying to teach, but the 10-month-old can understand your body language. So if you want to tell him that something is wrong, you can hold him, look at him in the eye and say, we don't hit we don't hit and using his hands you can teach him how to use his gentle hands but you know it's it's hard for him to truly understand what you mean but you have to start teaching we don't really let it pass if it's something like maybe throwing food on the floor all right we want to look at him foot on the table foot on the table you can be playful get your kids to you know hold his hands and take foot on the table so the more you repeat that the better the child can can um, understand. They can also understand your body language. So constantly just communicate with words still, even though he cannot understand because for children, the re expressive language comes before the, re no, the receptive language comes before the expressive language. So the receptive language is where they absorb, you know, everything that you say, whatever you do, then as they grow older, they'll start to express it. Okay. All right. Okay, one last question, how to convince your partner not to yell if he's just impatient, especially when a kid's already having a meltdown and the spouse is yelling. <sighs> it's so hard. It's so, so hard, Sharon. I know. Um, there's this parent who told me, let me see if I can find it. She says that um, the, her trigger is that the husband is yelling. Okay, so it's so hard, right? Okay, my advice is to talk to your husband outside the moment, so not during those meltdowns, but... Find out what are his stresses. Is he very stressed out at work? You know, why is he acting out this way? Does he kind of like need a break? Or uh, is it just his temperament that maybe he should talk about, you know, how he want to bring up the kids, talk about your parenting goals and ask him, you know, how do you want me to help you when you're triggered? Do we have a quote? Like if we say like watermelon, watermelon. Okay, so watermelon means you take a step away. I will take over something like that. Don't be a tech team and work with one another. Um, it's, it takes time to convince your partner, but I think by modeling it, it helps as well. So you model how it's done. All right. Mrs. Chua said, he's just another son. I agree. Sometimes I tell my friends, 
I have three children. <laughs> my husband and my two kids. <laughs> okay, thank you for being here. I just want you to just do a final um, you know, um, summary or takeaway of what you've learned today. Just one thing that you have learned today, one thing you want to try, either to you know, take care of yourself, or when have you scheduled a date in your calendar that you're going for a run, or when are you going to make, make time with your couple or with your partner. So can you tell me what is something you picked up, you know, about managing your anger at the moment, outside the moment. This is just for yourself as well to be accountable for what you have learned and try it tomorrow, okay? And I do encourage you guys to sleep early as well. So when you sleep early, it's much easier to manage yourself. Tomorrow, we'll talk about connection with the children inside my um, IG story. We're having a learning week this week in conjunction with the reopening of my course on Thursday from Yelling to Connecting. Okay, so um, stay tuned for more. I hope that after you go through this entire week, you do have a different perspective on how you respond to your children's behaviors and how important it is you know, to you that you want to treasure this relationship and build a strong relationship with your children. Okay, People are more important than things. I always tell my children, your brother and your sister are more important than that Lego block. Yeah, or like, you know, your, your, your sister is more important than your storybook. Yeah, so you got to find time to um, manage yourself and remember your relationship is the most important, okay? I can see some of you sharing. Minzy said, step up of the moment to align parenting goals as a team. Yes, please do that. Please do that. It's so, so important. Um, taking care of yourself. Okay, um, doesn't listen. Okay, so what? Okay, these parents say, very hard to talk to the partner. I think you need to schedule time to talk to your partner. Like, because I have a common calendar with my husband in the phone. So, um, if anything that both of us need to do, we just put it there. So, hopefully, like with that block of time, then it is easier. Okay. Take a pulse when the feeling builds up. Breathe. Yes. Breathing can activate your parasympathetic nervous system. So, that helps you to calm down for sure. All right. Figure out your triggers, whether it's an emergency or non emergency. Thank you, Karin. Um, all right. Uni said, Un, Uni Median said, thanks, I feel better. I'm so glad. At least I can help one person. I feel that I've done my job. <laughs> okay, thank you so much and have a good night. I'll see you on Wednesday. I'll put up reminders in the IG stories as well. Have a good night. Bye-bye.